again, is think about one thing that you can change about your recruiting process. One thing that you can change about your corporate culture. And just start with the one thing. Don't look at the, I've got to do all of this stuff. Start with one thing. We know our conversations, 50% of the time, are an influencing or decision-making factor of whether or not a person accepts an offer. So I'm going to let Keith talk because we're running out of time. Um, because we want to say something. Go ahead. Her contact information, William's contact information, and Keith are all in the handout. So they can, uh, and I'm, I'm going to encourage all of our guests to just share an email. The slide deck's going to be out on the, on the website as usual. But feel, you know, I'm, I'm, everybody can talk for hours with a lot of good things to add to us. So um, just want to make sure people know the contact information is out there. Yeah, so I said size does matter because regardless of what your size is, you can still create corporate culture. You can still make a difference on your recruitment and retention. And again, do it collaboratively. We are putting together shared groups as part of our DNI program for this year. The advisory council is coming out with it. These are people that are our advisory council are people that do DNI every single day of their lives. That's their jobs and their businesses. They are willing to share best practices. We have one of the CEOs teaching in the valley. There's only two chief diversity officers in the valley. Tap into them. You know they come to our roundtables and they talk about what it is, what it takes to create an engaged, inclusive culture. So. I'm here to give you some solutions of uh, things that we can do. It's, there's no cost to engage at this point. The roundtables are free. So, and there's more things coming out. Like this share group is talking about phenomenal things about what you can do to change your corporations and how you how you process and how do you recruit and how you retain. But do it. You know, there there are other levels. If you have managers that are hard to get them to move, engage them with other managers in the valley. You know, talent acquisition managers. There will be a group for talent acquisition managers. How one company does it may be different than another. Tap in, have, sit through your entire organization, get them involved in the process. So. Don, if you share that your offerings with me, I'll get them into the Okay, so yeah. Let's share this. I will. Okay. Let's Oh, that might be the older one. Okay. Donna, we all have to figure out what it stands for. Yes, we're actually rebranding. That's not what it stood for, for before. It was a very long name. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I love saying this and having this conversation in, in a manufacturing group because uh, show of hands, who here is a part of a manufacturing company today that does not require technology? No, right? So we can all agree that in order for you to do your jobs, you need technology. So right now, I just gave you everything I'm going to tell you. So you can leave early if you want or stick around and hear more. The challenge you have is that the entire shift of the world has changed because there are less people around that could work than the jobs that you all have. That is not a Lehigh Valley thing, that is a global thing. It impacts every industry in every country and every size company. You can all agree with that as well, right? Deloitte calls this the, social the, the age of social enterprise. And I say Deloitte not because I want you to think of this big 500,000 person companies that are doing the best of breed things that you can't afford. It's because they see around the corner. And I'm sure you understand that. That's why you're all here. You're trying to get a glimpse around the corner. And one of the elements, myself personally, for those of you that don't know, I spent my entire career sitting in front of HR leaders who talk a whole lot about needing more technology so they could do the things that help to grow your and develop your employees. And they all, if not most of them, to the high degree of 90% or more, fail dramatically of providing value to you enough so that you can actually give them money to go implement things. It's a challenge. HR I talked about a little bit earlier. They simply don't know how to get out of their own way. It's not their fault. It's just the way the world works. So now what Deloitte has said is that since everybody understands these challenges, that's not going to do the job for you. What you need to do is start putting action plans in. 
And it all starts with you and your leadership team. The reality is, what do you as an organization want? What do you as a leader within those organizations want? As a professional, as a person. Ultimately, you need to know where you are, right? And then you need to figure out where you're going so that you can get there. Without those two starting po those two points, it's essentially sitting around twirling your thumbs. We could agree with that as well, right? You're all doing financial planning, you know what I'm talking about. So what are the steps that companies are taking to go out and do this? Uh, oh, something else I want to let everyone in the room know, I co-host a podcast that has over 10,000 monthly listeners called the Geek Skeezers and Googleization Podcast. We talk about the future of work. We have CEOs of Silicon Valley software companies. We have book writers. We have thought leaders. We have phenomenal content that has to do with people and technology. I have grown into this kind of a concept where we are in the age where emotional and artificial intelligence are merging. And there's no better place for that to happen than inside of a work organization, okay? So if you want to figure out you as a person, what you want to do, the first thing you need to start thinking, or as an organization and as an organization is, who are we, what are we, what can we do, and what can we not do? Right, Bill? That's You're right. You're talking about the idea that you can't be a jack of all trades. You all have incredibly high stress, high profile positions to the degree that you can't be the jack of all trades. You have to figure it out. What's that called? That's called assessment. You need to be able to understand and assess yourself, and then be able, if you're lucky enough, you can replicate that process and give that to your team. The next step is gonna be, okay, so I know what I'm good at, I know what we can do as an organization, in terms of I know what we have. Now, how do we get together as a team? And Tim, you've been dialed in on the, the one thing that's underneath what you've been saying the whole time is, how in the world do what, we find the time to do this? I'll remind everyone here that technology is invented. You could call technology an assembly line, you could call it a smartphone, but technology was designed to reduce labor. That's why it's there. And now we've got technology moving so fast, we, we feel like we run out of time and labor to do the next project. So when we collaborate, how are we going to do this so that the person who just started and the person that's been with us for 30 years feels, feels good about it, and to Gary's point, what about the person who's investigating us as a potential employer? What do they think? And then the next step is, how do we continue the process? Because business is an infinite game. You're going to keep playing. The purpose of business is to stay in business. So if anyone tells you, here's the answer, call me in 90 days, let me know how it goes, they are short-sighted. You have to continue playing. You need that feedback loop, right? So what I'm gonna do is share with you answers and I'm going to make myself available to the, whoever wants to talk more about actually implementing it because I want to assume nobody here has somebody sitting in their hallway on the payroll just not doing anything about this but you're paying them. You probably don't have anybody that can do this stuff in your company. There's an organization called Dot In. If you were to take out your phone and please do, I'll get an email you this, but take out your phone and QR scan that. That will take you to a completely unbiased, I'm going to say that again, for DNI listeners and everyone else, completely unbiased screen that shows 30 pixelated images. You, as an individual, pick the 10 pixelated images you like the most, and out of that will come an assessment like you've never seen. Welcome to the age of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And it correlates four different styles of personality traits and attributes. Now, with that answer, you know what you're like instantly. You get a great report, it's on my LinkedIn profile. Check mine out. You also can share it with your team. And now you've got a group of people and you see all their assessments. Scanning their resumes. Scanning their LinkedIn profile. Scanning your job description. You now have templates regarding personality and technical know-how inside your organization. You have now assessed everyone inside of your organization on a personality level and a professional level. Okay, now I can see who works well with who. 
This is the age of artificial meeting emotional intelligence. People will mend and mesh and go in different directions. And because, and I know I'm speaking fast here because we don't have too much time, but because candidly, you don't have any options. You have no recruitment capabilities. And that's not a knock. That's just there's nobody there to recruit. So why not take the people you have, assess them, recognize who works well with others, recognize what power positions you have, and move forward. You can do that. This is what it looks like. So you'll see in the back here, there's this, this is uh, in the background here. It's got all the people in the team. By the way, you can go corporate company wide with this. And it shows who works well with who. And then it also gives you capabilities. So this, the blue might be an individual and the, the yellow might be your top performer. Or the blue might be the manager and the yellow might be the people that work for them. Drop five or six people in there, you know exactly what to do. The software also helps the managers understand how to send an email to somebody who might be high on the emotional level. How to communicate to somebody who's in a low emotional level. All the information is there, here's the catch. You don't have to be the expert. Somebody else already did it for you. So then the next step we're using this, huh? Companies are using Oh yeah, this is, yeah, dot in, D-O-T-I-N is the name of the company. Um, based out of Silicon Valley, massively large clients, massively small clients. Here's the fun part, they're in startup mode. Which means, and this is all part of the program that I offer, but all of the cost for this stuff is not expensive. In the grand scheme of things, we all know we've got to work together to make everything work. So the companies that I'm sharing with you today are in some sort of varying degree willing to work as easily as possible with people. And if a bunch of finance people in the room are going to say, that means it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. It means you're going to get results quick. The dot in thing for 3,000 person companies took two weeks. Two weeks to find out every bit of the people assess, uh, assessments you have or uh, assets you have in terms of personality, how they work well together, and what they can do for you. Two weeks. Keith, let me add to that too. When you understand your, uh, I call them operating styles of the people that work within your organization and your company, you can then pull those in to different teams to do a focus group. If you're working on a certain project, if you want to create efficiencies, then you pull those people in based on their assessments. And I would pull different people from different categories because they're all going to offer something slightly different and then start building out a process that works for everybody because your their thought process on how they would do it you're going to create a more um, synchronistic process that's going to benefit everybody no rehearsal we're, we're going to run late if somebody has to leave feel free to so my, my apology for not sticking to our hard stop because it's a dynamic topic we're having a good discussion so i appreciate it if you have to leave I know the sign-in sheets have passed around, so we'll take care of that. All this stuff will be out on the site. And uh, in case your calendar, you haven't figured it out or read the emails, we're always on the third Tuesday from now on. There are no holidays. I finally found a day that works. There are no holidays, <laughs> period. And uh, so third Tuesday, mark your calendars. Um, and, and obviously, we want to see you here in, uh, in February for compensation and, and uh, worst topic of the world. We get to talk to lawyers in March. But, uh, so if you have to leave, I, I appreciate it, and uh, please continue. And you can always call me, and we'll talk with Don and I. So now, who has the time here to sit down with all the newly elected committee members trying to figure out what kind of collaborative efforts we should put into our organization? Nobody. Welcome to Thought Exchange. This company is based out of the Northwest, or Utah, I believe. This is impressive software. Everyone has a smartphone. You essentially get a QR code at the beginning of a session. And this, it's a little bit tricky to see, but they did this. I took these screenshots from a, a webinar that they did. I've used this software in other groups. It's fascinating. The, there were 500 people on this webinar. And so they said they were going to demonstrate what Thought Exchange does and how it works. What Thought Exchange is, is an electronic way for you to, without giving up any bit of your identity, Phase two, we're still unbiased. You still don't know where these answers are coming from because you're going to set up a question that says, what are our company values? And you're gonna ask your executives, 
Then you could ask your managers and you could ask your rank and file because you're not sitting around in a room listening to 40 people tell you about their lifelong stories about how they got to that floor that day. You're asking them a question, and this question was, what's the best ice cream flavor? 500 people on the webinar, how long do you think that would take to figure out exactly what's the best flavor ice cream? It took six minutes, and here's why. Because what happens is you put in your answer. So this could be any question however many questions that you have about what you think of the company and whether or not you think that your employees agree. What, what, is, what are we, what are we doing here? So then you ask a question and then what happens is as all of those questions are being answered, they're being aggregated. Machine learning is enabling all of the words being used and they're all bubbling to the surface. So if people were saying vanilla, vanilla is starting to move up. People are using descriptive words, purest flavor. All of that is moving up to the top, but maybe there's some chocolatiers and they're talking about chocolate. So what happens is, as you're done answering your questions, the very next, sorry, I'm gonna show you how to do it, slide of your thumb, you get to rank everyone else's answer. And so within minutes, you're giving your anonymous opinion about what you think the company is doing right, wrong, or indifferent, and then you get to rank what you think other people's answers are. And then at the end of it, and I apologize, this is not a good slide, it gives you a summary of what is really happening inside of your organization. Well, okay, so now we know our strengths, we know our weaknesses, we know our people, we know our personalities, we know our technical capabilities. Now we know what everyone's thinking. We as a leader group go back and say, all right, well, if this is what they're thinking and we want to go from A to B, what's in the middle? What do we need to start doing? They give you the answers. You can go for it. So it's basically an immediate anonymous pulse survey. Mm -hmm. That collaborates with everyone, giving you direction and, and a realistic snapshot. Mm -hmm. What's that called again? Thought exchange. So that's a great way to develop your corporate culture. Yep. Yep. It's an easy way to develop it. Do they specify like a critical mass for, uh, for actually running this sort of program with your company? No. They, they say it scales fine, you know, orders of magnitude like that? Absolutely. Okay. It's the principle. Yeah. Right. So they use it for other things besides culture, right? Yeah. No, they use it for, you, you did, I'm thinking you're doing training to all your tech reps and somebody said, no, it's not clear. Yeah. Or it doesn't work that way. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, the guy giving the negative comments is safe to say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that comment, like your bunch of five stars. And then yeah. you know. I'm, Keith, gonna, I'm just going to say, you said it's a great way to develop corporate culture. Mm -hmm. Seems to me it's a great way to expose corporate culture. Yeah. Both. Really. Both. So what yes. are you here for? Are we going to push culture aside and let every building on our block build a culture and take everyone? And I'm not knocking you now, I'm just saying, like, the idea of, yes, you might, have, you might just expose that the idea that the company has neglected the <coughs> resources, it's, it's time that's look at it a little differently. But when you say develop, you mean to expose it so that you can work on it. Is that what you're saying? Or, or you put your own questions in here, yeah, correct? Sure. So you you ask the questions of what they would what would be a great corporate culture for them. Because you're designing the questions on this. This is just tallying the answers for you from my understanding, right? You're you're doing the input on the questions yeah, and the content. Yeah, so yeah. the content you get to create so you can use it as an exposing, like if you think, if management thinks this is the way this company operates and this is really good, and you pose that to your employees, and they may say, no, it's not so much. And then you, you can reverse that and ask them, really inquire from them what it is that they would say is a great corporate culture. And then what do you do with that information, right? The next part is the loop, feedback. How do you keep it going? How do you build the culture? How do you get your employees cult-like enough so that they feel they're a part of something. You have to maintain a relationship with it. Another company called 155. They believe there's somebody else who wrote the theory, but they put it into a technology-based um, communication where it should take uh, any employee of any skill set 15 minutes to express how it is they feel they're doing at their job and, per, and, and ask for questions. And at the very same time, it should take their manager no more than five minutes to be able to address that. 
So think of your millennials, think of your boomers, think of whoever you want. They all have needs, they all have wants, they all want help. And they all want to belong. So now, this, if you put together, you know, the survey is, you know, how was your week? What challenges did you face? What did you like? And you can put in these questions. This is just me talking to you here. How can I help? Inside of those answers, the system has machine learning capabilities that if somebody says, I really can't figure out a way to get on to work on time. It's just this thing. I'm that guy. I can't do it. Well, inside of that answer will be hyperlinks to areas that a manager could simply look up, click, and talk about the discipline of habits. Here's a YouTube video you could share with your employee that essentially allows them to take on the, the ownership of creating that first new habit. And by the way, that question gets brought into next week. And so how the manager now knows. So now what I'm hoping you're catching on to is that you can actually accomplish what nobody else is doing. And it won't take you much time. It'll take you the money to get the software, and it'll, it'll cost you the money to incorporate a partner that can help you oversee the program. Somebody who has dealt with implementation, dealt with change, and knows the idea that people generally will react and respond to ways that they're engaged by. So we're not talking about a large overhead money, we're not talking about a lot of time, but we are talking about data, action, and engagement. And going back to the challenge that everyone has, nobody knows what they want. They don't know how to express it, they don't know how to deliver on it. They don't have analytics. These tools are not being talked about in the mainstream, because in the mainstream you've got ADPs and ultimates and work dates. And they're coming in and they're telling you, spend six figures with our human capital management. And you're like, yes, human capital management, I need it. And then they take it and they dump it on your HR department. Anyone got an HR department with too many people that are sitting around not doing anything? No, they can't do it, they're not qualified. Simple, precise steps will accelerate your ability to transform your company. And, and ladies and gentlemen, you don't have a choice anymore. You have a timeline to where the market is going to sweep and somebody on your block is going to build a culture that everyone else talks about. They'll put it on their website. I come from the talent acquisition software world as well. Recruiters are not cold calling people anymore. They're engaging candidates. Passive candidates are all that are left. So you gotta make friends. And so if they have an employee brand to put in front of those online social friends, that brand, no matter if you're in client services, accounts payable, whatever department you're in, that brand is what's gonna get people. And I said it here in the room before, I'll say it again. If you're not doing it, someone in the building you work at, someone on the street you live, you work at, or someone in your industry is doing it. But they're not doing it like this. And this will give you that, that agility to get through. And so this is part of my whole concept as it relates to moving from a work-life balance mindset to what I call life-work integration. I firmly believe that the health of your organization is inherently tied to the health of the individual organisms that work in it. And the time has now come to prove it. And it all starts with, most people don't know what they want. Then they realize in a deep reflection that they know what they don't want. And so now what happens is they get stuck. What's that? That's called self-awareness. As an organization, you're doing the same thing all the time. And now you flip the coin and you do know what you want. Now you've got the data, you know the people you have, you're able to move forward, you've got the tools in place. Now it's time to start creating the future of the company as everyone sees it, because it's transparently shared. And I'll talk more about this when we ever talk again. All right, we're going a little over. But that's it. Questions? I'll, I'll, I'll draw a parallel. Go back one slide, please. When people are in job search, this is what they go through. You know, they, 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 they're not quite sure what their next job is, but they're trying to figure it out. And if you can very quickly get to, here's what I don't want to do again. Here's what, here's what I didn't like at my old job. My boss, the travel, the politics, the lack of resources, we couldn't make payroll, whatever it was, that's easy to understand 
And then you could, I always call that like the cathartic step. You have to get that shit out of your system yeah. and clear your head. Okay? And then you, you start to think, I know what I want to do. And you still circle back one more time because you don't want another bad experience to say, during the interview process, during my intelligence, during my networking, I need to find out the things that, 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 that hang in my craw. You know, whether it's the politics, whether it's what's the truth of the job, why is the job open? We ask those questions. We go through that process every five or 10 or 15 years when we're in job search, but our employees are going through it every day. And if you don't, you get great keep. I mean, if I mean, you got candidates sitting in front of you going through that, so you might as well help them through it. And you don't want your employees to leave over the same reason. I mean, it's, I mean we don't, I, mean, I know this is a closed door, so to speak, group, but we all do that. It's an inherently human thing. Yeah, but, but build a, recognize it and build a tool and a system and, and a discussion around it. Yeah, I think the tools that Keith shared are great. Um, we do a survey. We have a company that's, they do group hires, and they're bringing in 104 people. And we are surveying every single one to say, and they're not all coming from outside the area, but what about their company is going to make a difference? What about working there is going to make their job easier? And so, because this their, C, their chief associate um, officer really wants to understand how to create a corporate culture because this particular career is like huge work hours, huge more than like huge work hours. And so, and it's critical to the, to the customers that they work with that these people are in a great state of mind. And so having these, these questions, having these surveys, asking the questions is really going to drive, you know, what's going to make their life easier. I had a group of writers. We worked for a large, large company and it, things kept shifting. And I finally went to them and I said, what can I do to make your life easier? Because I know the, the rules keep changing. And I had one writer who said, I've never had a boss ask me that question. So if you ask the question, you know, there's a, there's a verse I always quote from the Bible. It says, you have not because you ask not. You don't have the employee. We don't have what we need internally for culture because we're not asking the questions to the employees that want to give us the answer. Good place to end. Alpha Omega. That's where we started. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> don't listen to these people. You're not going to be happy. And you know what? The executive with plenty of money and his own or her standards doesn't relate to 95% of their employees, if not 100% of their employees. Okay, and you have to, you have to invert it, and you have to find, and we're not good at it. I'm not good at it. Okay, so you have to find a way to get the input, you know, whether it's the focus group, whether it's the thought exchange technology. Okay, because people don't think what they're thinking in a meeting. I'm not stupid. Or they didn't have the day telling you everything. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, I just think I'll, I'll apologize if you expected a checklist and give me the little benefit. Benefits that would make it great. Because Here, here's a little with bit that, of a checklist that will have beyond that. And none of those are the things we started with. No. Because it was the early dismissal on Friday. Right. It was the casual right. rest day. It was bring your kid to work day and make it a worthwhile day. All of those are great things to do. But they don't pay you. The leverage, the multiplier effect, is this, I, I think we agree, is this stuff. That wasn't the hard part. Well, this stuff is diluted. <laughs> I mean, it's talky talk, and you know, most people, listen, if you don't have benefits, you're going to get zero people working here, period. The power has shifted, right? It's not about, and this is what I could only assume, a big challenge you have talking to your executive leadership is that they don't realize that they're not in control anymore, or at a minimum, they're not in as much control as they used to have, because it's just a landscape. It's not going to be better. No, no. And the only real answer is getting the right tools in place, aligning with people that can help you implement those tools, and now you've got momentum, and that's called the culture. So let me close with one affirmation to make it just very clear. One thing's going to happen. We're going to have an economic slowdown. How many, how many 80, 90 months, whatever we are, growth, whatever it is, it's due. Here's the bad news. When people lay off, they're not laying off their good employees. 
So we talk about there's really a 1% unemployment. We're going to go to three or four of people that want to work and have some skills. We're going to go from one to five, but nobody wants that delta four. So if you think they're going to be part of the solution, you know, they're, we're going to throw more, more junk into our food stream. So if we can't do it now, you don't take the chance to do it now, it gets really ugly when you try to do it with, with uh, flotsam and jetsam floating around in your, in your, in your inbound report. Yeah. I don't know, we need to finish on a positive note. <laughs> Good session, despite, despite, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you folks, okay. Um, thanks for sharing. You know, Chris, great metrics. Sam, we fixed it in here a bit. Tim, you know, therapy will continue here. For the <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. okay, much needed. So, uh, anybody else have anything to go to cause? Okay, great. Um,